Q&A questions that I got from fans. Uh, what was the, oh, they asked me this last week too. They said, what was the last song that I listened to before doing the podcast? Because I talk a lot about how I, I, uh, I use music to kind of get into gimmick or character or to get inspired or just, you know, to, to keep everything positive and energetic and fun. Um, and so I think if Vince Russo watches this episode of the Talks with Taylor Hendricks podcast, he'll pop for this. Um, I happen to know for a fact because it's one of my all time favorite songs ever. And it's kind of funny because I'm actually like quite a bit of a metal head, like legit. So the fact that this is one of my all time favorite songs is very funny. I think it really speaks to who I am as an individual. Um, this song is very much a part of my personality and who I am as a person, you know. Uh, Russo always talks about how I'm an old soul and it's so true. This makes it so hard for me to relate to people my own age in the wrestling business because I just, I don't know, I don't think the same way and I don't. I don't know. I just never quite fit in. You know, I was just always just too different. Um, and I think part of that is because I was never on time, meaning I was always too late or too early because I am an old soul. You know, I always felt like I was too early for a lot of things and I was too late for a lot of other things when it came to my talent as an individual. Uh, you know, I probably would have done very well during the attitude era. And I also would have done very, very well, um, a couple years ago in WWE, you know, um, so I was always too early and too late, uh, you know, so it's very, very interesting. Um, and actually the song that I listened to right before this episode of my podcast is actually a song that I listened to on some very iconic parts of my wrestling career, like right before those moments. So the last song I listened to now that you have all the hype as I'm, you know, doing like big fish over here, you know, he was too early and then he was late. Um, it was make your own kind of music by mama cast. That is one of my all time favorite songs. It speaks to my personality, who I am as an individual, and kind of my philosophy on life, and how I've adapted over the years. And to me, I don't know, just to me, that, that song is just total goals for me. Um, I will always make my own kind of music, and I love Mama Cass for that. All right, my next question that I was given as a former preschool teacher and a teacher in the system, would I have my kids in public schools? No, I don't even need to think about that. No, as a former preschool teacher and as a person who uh, grew up to go after their childhood dreams and I'm now a children's author and an author and I've you know achieved different levels of success in a couple different industries and stuff, I can safely tell you no. If you are a parent right now, I can't tell you what to do, but I would not have my children in public schools. If I was a parent right now, I would have pulled my kids out of public school already. Um, I mean, it's no surprise surprised that I think the last analytics that I saw um, as of I think about a month ago I want to say give or take was almost 30,000 children being pulled out of New York public schools I don't think politics belong in the school system um, and I don't really believe in indoctrinating youth I mean that's kind of a tactic that Hitler used <laughs> uh, to create World War II basically so I, I have some pretty strong feelings about that and so I can say with complete confidence and earnestness I would not have my children in public schools I would do whatever I needed to do as a parent to either homeschool my kids, private school, Catholic school, whatever it is to get my children out of the public school system. I do not recommend it. <sighs> there is so much more that I could say on that whole nonsense. Like, it's no wonder other countries are beating us because our school system is so underfunded. It's so politicized. It's so all the things that it shouldn't be. And that really sucks because we're leaving such a huge mess to the next generation. And we were supposed to learn from all the baby boomers mistakes as millennials and Gen X and Gen Z and whatever, wherever you know your birthday falls into. Um, and we're instead just leaving a bigger and a bigger and a bigger societal mess for the next generation. And we're not even giving them the tools to understand how to fix it. It's just a huge mess. Um, next question is, what do I think is missing from wrestling today? the art the art is missing from wrestling okay and what do i mean by that okay wrestling is competitive it's a performance art but at the end of the day it's 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 a an artistic sport basically and i think the art is missing from wrestling okay there is a difference between being a pro wrestling i, I mean a pro wrestler and a sports entertainer and what i think a lot of people in the wrestling business miss is the fact that sports entertainer 
makes and draws more money than a pro wrestler. And I see a lot of pro wrestlers get angry when, you know, people from other industries come in and get big positions on television and huge paydays and all this other stuff. And they're like, well, I've been in here. I've been training. I've been doing this, that, and the other. I've already signed. How come that couldn't have been me? Well, there's many reasons why it wasn't you. Are you providing that same sort of value and eyeballs and money and generation that that (laughs) star from a different industry is going to bring to the company? If the answer is no, then instead of complaining about it, what are you actually doing about it? So then that could be your spot. I think people are forgetting the performance art of it. You know, um, Al Snow, who's a part of the brand family, used to teach so many awesome things in, in, in this regard. You know, what are you going to do that's going to fill up the nosebleed seats as well as the front row? What are you doing? And also, I think a lot of people, because they don't teach us in independent wrestling schools, and most of them anyway, is how to create a brand. Like, your look your gear, how you show up to shows, how you leave to shows, all of that matters. Dress for the position you want, not the one you have, right? Um, invest in your gear. Like if you look like Shizit, then you're, you're, the company that decided to book you looks like Shizit. Um, and then like, why would anybody take a chance on you, right? Um, the other thing is, is creating a brand. It's not just about the moves you do in the ring. It's why you do them. What they look like doesn't make sense for the gimmick that you were supposed to have. Like you need to have a cohesive brand. Like when someone sees something, I can guarantee you they can be like, oh, that's Taylor Hendricks. Whether it's the outfit I wore or the photograph I had or the type of match style and wrestling style that I had, um, I took from influences, but I was never a carbon copy of anything. And that is missing, okay? You can't be the next Trish Stratus. She already exists, you know? Uh, You can't be the next uh, Brock Lesnar. He already exists. But you can take inspiration from different people, different pop culture things, and come up with something that's uniquely your own that is marketable for a company to be able to invest in and be confident that they're going to see a return on their investment, aka an ROI. All right, if if they're going to sign you for thousands upon thousands of dollars and they're not going to have a return on their investment, that's just them flushing money down the proverbial toilet, okay? It is a business. If you are not putting butts in the seats, you're not good for business. Um, You know, if you can't sell tickets, you're not good for business. And the people that are in the main event have the most responsibility on the entire card, okay? They're the ones that most of the people are coming to see, all right? And, And a card should flow in that manner. You know, the opening match on a card All of it from the opening to the main event should all lead up to the main event. It's all supposed to be cohesively put together. Wrestling as such, you have to have a larger than life personality. Uh, Betty Davis used to say uh, acting should be larger than life. Scripts should be larger than life. Wrestling's the same way, all right? And a lot of people, they just don't understand that art of it, okay? Um, And there's a very big difference, you know? Each company has their own demographic, but a lot of not a lot of wrestling schools teach that, okay? And not a lot of wrestlers understand to kind of adapt their their match psychology to where they are. They don't they're not really necessarily taught that. That doesn't mean change your gimmick and who you are depending on where you are. No. It just means you change the flow a bit. You change the type of story you're going to tell in the ring with your moves and your acting and your gimmick and your character. You know, you're not necessarily going to wrestle in Memphis, Tennessee, the same thing you would in in uh Japan. Okay, you're not going to wrestle the same way in Los Angeles that you would in South Carolina. All right, you know, East and West Coast, they have their own style. Okay, down South has their own style. The Midwest kind of has a hybrid style, so forth and so on. There's a spot any okay I'm I'm going to take uh you know something out of Ratatouille really quick, which is going to sound kind of funny, but anybody can wrestle. Anybody can learn moves and wrestle. Not everyone can be a superstar, all right? And if you are, you know, the next generation coming in, there is no excuse for you to not have charisma. There is no excuse for not for you to not be able to cut a believable promo that would make people want to spend their hard-earned money, like Al Snow says, to want to buy a ticket, then spend their more hard-earned money of the gas money after they've already worked such a long-ass day, go to the venue, sit at the venue, pay even more money because they probably didn't even have dinner yet, sit in the seats for hours on end, then possibly buy merchandise, then spend more of their hard-earned and gas money to get home after a long night, sit in traffic and all this other stuff. What are you doing that's going to inspire somebody to want to do that, to see you, to meet you, to cheer you, to boo you, etc., so forth and so on? It's all connected. Anybody can learn how to wrestle. Not everyone has what it takes to be a 
superstar. Um, and I think that that is definitely that that art is missing from today's wrestling. And that's why you, you see that in the in the numbers. You see that in the numbers. You know, um, WWE at one point was beating the number one program on television, which was the NFL. Now it's it's not even close. Um, so there's there's but there's things that we could do that could bring that back. It's all it's all about the vision and where you're going and how how to make it make sense. Right. Anyway, I digress. Um, what is my advice to parents? This is the next question. This is so good. You know, there's so many different thoughts and processes for raising children and no two children are exactly alike. You know, they don't pop out of the womb with individual personalized uh, manuals on, oh, how to raise Abigail, <laughs> how to raise Adam. No, no child comes with that. So it's a lot of trial and error. You know, I think for parents, normalize saying you're sorry and why you're sorry. Don't be afraid to apologize to your children. Okay, it's condescending when you feel like you don't need to apologize to your kid because they're your kids, so somehow they're beneath you. You would be surprised how many therapy bills would be avoided if parents just took more accountability for their mess ups. You're going to mess up, it's okay. All right, to a certain extent, it's okay. But learn, normalize saying you're sorry and what you're sorry. Hey, Johnny, um, you know, mommy lost her temper, that wasn't okay. Uh, mommy's not perfect, I'm sorry you didn't deserve that, okay? And I'm going to try to do better. I really do, I am sorry. You would not believe how many children would not need therapy and act out if there was more parental accountability. Um, another piece of advice that I would give to parents is Stop acting like you should win a parent award for doing the things that you should do as a parent, okay? Your child should not have to bend over backwards in gratitude and thanks simply because you put a roof over their head, food on the table, and clothes on their back. Like, you're supposed to do those things as a parent. Like, that, it, that's part of your job, okay? You know, you should a child be grateful? Yeah, but don't be like, oh, well, you know, I put this food on the table. You chose to have that kid, you know, your, your child had zero say in you being their parent. Your child had zero say in the conception and birth and, and choosing the parents. They, they had zero say. So like, just understand that that's part of your job as a parent. Um, also be aware of things like parentification. Parentification is a term that basically means when your child is taking on more of your responsibilities as, as a parent. Um, and oftentimes parentification um, results in those children growing up to be adults that have low self-esteem, uh, low self-value, the way they view themselves and self-confidence. They are people pleasers to their own detriment and they don't know how to set healthy boundaries because they didn't see healthy boundaries in the home because they were busy helping be the parent. A lot of times you can see this in, you know, the child making sure mom and dad have lunch to bring to work. Um, you know, the child being there to comfort you after a bad day. Uh, you telling your child, oh, you're so mature for your age. Well, maybe that's because that child learned early on to raise regulate their own emotions based off of your emotions instead of just regulating themselves as an individual. So beware of parentification. This could be detrimental to your child once they go out into the world as an adult, which should ultimately be one of your goals as a parent is raising strong, independent thinking, intelligent, productive, um, integrity, motivated, driven members of society. Um, and a lot of times parentification really hurts that process. So those are some things, you know, if you want to ask me that every week, I'll come up with new stuff. But those are some of the things that first immediately come to mind when I, you know, I learned about that when I was taking child psychology, early childhood education, regular psychology, um, and just being a teacher and also being a child that grew up in, in, in a different kind of home and having to learn how to do these things at a later age when I wish I would have learned them as a young child. All right. Um... Tell us some wrestlers that you think are currently underrated in wrestling. Okay, immediately comes to mind uh, Chris Bay, Alex Gracia, Queen Aminata, and Ace Austin. I think those are some drastically underrated talents. If I was a booker um, at Impact Wrestling, for example, I would be booking Chris Bay and Ace Austin so differently. I also think that Matt Taven is drastically, dramatically underrated. You know, people were blaming him at ROH for uh, low attendance when, like, in reality, he wasn't even the champion. So it's like, 
you know, I think he took a lot of slack that he didn't deserve. And he can be very charismatic when he wants to be. And he also has a really fun uh, old school hybrid mixed with like a more modern style with a very unique look that I think speaks television. Um, and then Alex Gracia and Queen Aminata, I do not, I genuinely do not understand how they are not signed to a big company yet. I don't understand. I don't get it. Like if I, if I had a company and I had money, I know I would get a return on my investment by, by signing them and investing in them and kind of taking over the trajectory of their career. Like they, they should be signed. Um, so those are the, those are the ones that immediately come to 